Next, we'll hear from Tanja Coleman, MSIR 2005 graduate, president of Reimagine Organization Development and lecturer at the Baumhart Center, along with John Harris, associate professor of management about the impact the current pandemic is having on women and the workplace. Thank you, Don and Tanja. Thank you, Good Carol. evening. Thanks so much for the warm welcome. Um, Don and I presented together last year and our presentation ironically was about women and leadership in the workplace. And we were really given great tidbits and statistics on how women can elevate and have allyship and sponsorship and mentorship and all these great things. And then a few short, a short few months later, the pandemic happens and it feels like the bottom has dropped out of everything that we know as routine, consistent, normal, all of that. <laughs> Everything's a little up in the air. So when Rick asked me to present, I was so excited that <laughs> Dawn decided to present with me again because I really feel like it's a continuum of that same conversation, just highlighting different pieces of it now that we talked about in that session, but now are sort of amplified just due to the current situation that we're in. So I'll allow Dawn to uh, click in and, and say something and we'll kind of go back and forth a little bit as we did last time. Okay, thanks Tanya. Um, it's great to be here again with you. We had a great conversation before, so I'm looking forward to this conversation tonight. Um, I think there's several things we wanna think about and cover tonight. Um, I, as uh, Tanya said, uh, we're gonna kind of shift gears here from a more philosophical discussion uh, to a little more data oriented uh, conversation as well, uh, just because we really lucked out big time. Uh, McKinsey uh, and Lean In has, have just recently done a huge study. Uh, they, they surveyed over 40,000 North American employees um, and so we have a lot of data to share as well tonight. So we're gonna jump into that. I think we also wanna talk about kind of some of the benefits that we've seen from this disruptive process, what's been called the coronavirus setback, um, as well as some of the challenges and then ultimately think about how this really impacts companies and corporations in the future as well. So um, just to kind of kick things off, um, obviously in companies and firms, we are very concerned about gender diversity. Um, we know from the research that we have more innovation. We have a better financial performance at firms that do have gender diversity. So we're very concerned about this issue. And we see mothers and children as our next generation of potential business leaders. So we're very concerned about these um, individuals as well. So to kick off with just a few statistics to kind of get us rolling tonight, um, we know that 47% of our labor force is made up of women. Um, women make up more of the lower income service and retail jobs. Um, and we know that the, the initial coronavirus uh, related job loss was 54% female. Um, and so given the, the types of jobs that uh, women are in, uh, they got hit harder by this uh, coronavirus. So lots of people are calling this the coronavirus setback. Although I think ultimately we do wanna talk about there's some positive things that have come out of this as well. We know that about 20% uh, working mothers have considered dropping out of the labor force due to the pandemic whereas only 11% of fathers have. So really about twice as many women um, are thinking about dropping out of the labor force than men. Um, we know that there's an additional 15% mothers that are talking about dialing back their careers. In other words, cutting hours or having uh, less demanding roles. Uh, and we also know that this has particularly hit women with young children very, very hard. So 25% of women with young children are talking about uh, leaving or quitting their positions. Um, and obviously this has not hit uh, individuals who are childless quite as hard. So only about 10% of both men and 10% women are talking about leaving the workforce due to the pandemic. So what does all this data tell us? It tells us that it's hitting mothers hard, 
working mothers, it's hitting uh, mothers with young children uh, even harder. And people, the, the surveys are telling us that the biggest work challenge, interestingly enough, is not childcare, but burnout and anxiety concern about losing your job. Um, and so that's some of the issues that people are really talking about um, as well. So that kind of kicks us off with some data and information. Um, thank you, McKinsey and Lena, for all of that data and information. And, and Tanya, I thought we could talk about, there are some real opportunities and benefits um, of this pandemic for women. And I thought maybe we could talk about some of those next. Yeah, I think, you know, with this pandemic and all that is done to kind of um, bring about this notion of really negativity, what it has done in some instances is really pinned women's wings on, so to speak. So a lot of women have gotten very creative in terms of entrepreneurship. And I think with the shutdown and um, women really thinking about what do I want to do next? What really makes me happy? Oftentimes we found that some women were really in roles that they weren't happy with to begin with. And so this really gave them a new license. And especially with some of the small business loans. Now I know there's a lot of things up in the air about who got the money and how you could get it and all of that. But a, a lot of women did get opportunity to have some level of financing through that and be able to really think about their businesses and think about what their next step would be. Also, you know, the whole notion, notion of side hustle kind of came about where a lot of women really took things that they were innately good at and interested in and turned it into kind of this side business so that if they did need to really leave their job for whatever reason, they would have something, some other income to rely on. And I think more than anything, the pandemic has really taught a lot of individuals, specifically women, that it might not be as prudent to only rely on one stream of income, particularly women, we're great and we're multifaceted and we can do everything, right? We put our capes on and we're very creative. And so a lot of women have really taken that and, and used it to their advantage. Now, there's still some, some level of drawback with that, right? Still women funding and financing in business is not the same as men particularly African-American women are behind um, everyone statistically in terms of venture capital, in terms of investment. Um, but you, I am seeing more people do crowdfunding and other ways to fund their businesses, which has been great. But also, I, you know, I, I would be um, reticent if I didn't mention that I just did a really quick poll just on LinkedIn just to say, hey, how can companies really help you? Um, and 55% of the respondents did say childcare was an issue. And the other 26%, which was the second highest category, said leadership development. So I think what that tells us is a lot of what Don and I were talking about last year around having opportunities for women to continue to develop. And I know as companies have um, closed their doors and folks are working remotely, you really don't hear a lot about leadership development and management development opportunities happening. And if they are, they're usually self-funded. So you might be seeking a certification or going back for your MBA, things that you're personally responsible for versus you know, a training department or internal leadership development opportunities. So how are we going to make sure that women continue to grow and evolve during this pandemic? Because also, there's this um, sense of there's no division of work and home because you would go to work and then when you come home, the thought was you're home and if you wanted to work, you could. Well, now everything's like conflated. Everything's together and people are really struggling with that. And to Dawn's point, that is really part of why women in particular are having so much anxiety and a funny story is um, I, I have a couple friends that are married and, you know, when you hear about the child care, it's always them. And I'm like, well, <laughs> you have a husband, but they, it's like they make the plans without even thinking about the husband because oftentimes they're not contributing at the same level. Sorry, Abe. But oftentimes, <laughs> oftentimes they're not. A lot of the child care still falls on the women. And to Don's point again, 
women are often in the nurturing roles. Most of them are the nurses and the teachers and the social workers and the caregivers. And so it really has been a challenge for women, but we are seeing women really take the challenge and parlay it into opportunities in some cases, but in other cases, we're seeing women sort of lose their leadership footage through all of this. And Dawn and I will talk about some ways in which organizations can really help support women through this pandemic. Thanks, Tanya. I would also add um, in terms of, you know, I, I think you're absolutely right that the there's a lot more women entrepreneurs that are really kind of taking off in this environment. They have more mm -hmm. flexibility. We know that about 40% of the women without children um, are really jumping in. They're getting funded and they're getting their businesses off the ground. Um, another thing that's happening too is with this normalization of, of working from home um, that, you know, people never thought that all of us would be working from home. Um, people can work from any location. Uh, I think right. Haley is off in LA now and we've got people, uh, you know, all over. Uh, our Dean is uh, not in Chicago tonight. Uh, so you can work from many different locations. Uh, you don't have to be in Chicago to have a job in Chicago. So it may open up a lot of opportunities uh, for women because they don't necessarily have to be in a specific uh, location. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing too that's interesting that's happening, um, and Abe, you'll love to hear this. We're going to pick on you tonight because you do have a young child. Um, so women are taking on more home responsibility, but um, we're also finding that men are logging more hours on tasks at home because they are home. Uh, so that is some of the, the good news, I think, uh, as well. Um, and as uh, Tanya has also uh, pointed out, uh, you know, lots of opportunities to develop new skills. There's more flexibility in your schedule, those kinds of things. So going back and getting an MBA or developing leadership skills, lots of opportunities there um, as well. And, and one thing that I was thinking about, um, and, and I think this is uh, amazing that to a certain extent, if you have a daughter, every single day is take your daughter to work day. Um, and they really have the opportunity to see what their mother, what their father do on a daily basis and, and learn a tremendous amount about the work world um, from being able to, you know, literally take your daughter to work every day. So um, there's some great opportunities there as well. Um, it, it, even though, so having the kids home, it, there's some positives and negatives there, but there clearly are some positives. Exactly. But I think next we can maybe jump into some of the challenges that, that women are experiencing through this pandemic. Yeah, I'll, I'll just um, kind of piggyback off of one of your, your good things before we get to the challenges, Don. And that is really about 83% of companies say the jobs can be performed remotely, which is great for women and actually everyone in the workplace, to your point, just being having the opportunity to be mobile, but also having the opportunity to live in places that might be more economically reasonable for people to reside in outside of a big city and, and paying more in costs and rent and mortgage payments and all of that. And then 70% of organizations surveyed really felt that they're able to increase their diversity recruiting and diversity hiring based on the fact that people don't have to be in one area. Like if you think of Silicon Valley, right? Um, it's not a wildly diverse place, but now those organizations can, they can recruit and have folks working in Brooklyn and Harlem and Chicago and all from all over. So I think the level of, um, the, the, the benefit and the good part is the level and diversity of folks will just be vast. And I think you'll be able to see this nice immersion of folks from all over re different regions, but also um, different ethnicities being able to be part of certain organizations, whereas before it was much more difficult. You had to pick up your whole family and relocate and then find housing and all of that. So in that, from that perspective, it's, it's very positive. So I think that's one of the, the great things about um, working from home and having organizations that are doing more of that. Also, I think with the um, coronavirus and the, and the COVID situation, it's really bringing to light a lot of the challenges that women face, but they walk in the door at work and they smile and just suck it up and no one really knew. 
what was going on. And now it's everyone is suffering in the same way in terms of childcare, in terms of um, many individuals having sandwich situations where you, you're taking care of parents and you're taking care of your children, right? And um, so that is a challenge in and of itself. And you just didn't talk about those things in the workplace. And now it's just part of that. So I see also the goodness of some of this is managers and leaders have become much more authentic um, leaders having really that leadership skill around empathy, being able to check in with teams, being able to talk to folks on a more human level outside of solely work that you are a family and you are working together. One of the things that um, was a, a, a little bit of a disappointing conversation I had with someone recently is she said she gave her resignation. And when she did so, she explained to, to um, her manager that she was having a tough time. And the manager was like, well, I hope you're well in uh, two weeks. And she was really expecting more of a dialogue and more of that manager trying to save her because she feels like when men resign, it's like a conversation and it's like, why? And how can we help you? And, and she felt like it was just an easy brush off. Like she wasn't important at all anyway. And, and, and that could be part of just not being face to face too, right? You're doing a lot via email. You're doing a lot via um, Zoom and, and virtual discussion and not that human interaction, that energy face-to-face. -face. So there's a lot of presumptions that can be made in that. But um, there's those are some of the positives that are coming out of it. And we can, I think uh, Rick has given us our five-minute wrap, but in our breakout sessions too, we can talk a little bit more about how organizations can help sponsor and support women throughout this pandemic, because it really is something that the remote work, I don't think is going away anytime soon. So it's just our new reality. And, and, and I think it will continue to be so even when we have a vaccine for COVID. So we have to figure out how organizations can really help support women, elevate women. Um, in 2020, I do a lot of research on women in CEO positions, and we were at our plateau this year. Like we had 37 women out of, of at, uh, Fortune 500 organizations, and that was up four from last year, which we were at 33. So we're starting to see this nice plateau and I don't wanna see it diminish. So we really have to help organizations build women, continue to offer leadership development and really help them flourish during this time. Yeah, I think, um you know, the, we can also talk about dual career um, couples, some of the challenges mm -hmm. that they face, um, you know, and they really get hit with the home and the family at the same time. Mm -hmm. So uh, working mothers are actually spending three or more additional hours um, with child care and home responsibility than they did pre-COVID. 40% women report that, whereas only 27% fathers report that. Um, and mothers are also saying that they are responsible for more than 50% of what goes on in the home. Um, so they are getting sort of that double whammy of, of home and uh, family life on top of work. And so I think as you pointed out, um, there's an awful lot that we need to talk about in terms of what corporations can do to help and, and deal with these kinds of situations that um, really families find themselves in, not just women, but, but men and women um, in, in the family. And so creating more parenting and homeschooling kinds of benefits um, is going to be very, very helpful um, for families um, to think about, you know, and also expanding um, benefits for child care, thinking about ways to do homeschooling, those kinds of things um, that are going to help parents, um, you know, not scheduling meetings super early. Um, just small things like that can make a huge um, difference. You know, if you have parents that are divorced or separated, think about um, minimizing the meetings on the days when those individuals have the children. Um, so some of those kinds of things, being able to kind of tailor things to specific situations that families do find themselves in. Um, and, and so you can really sort of help people manage their own uh, personal needs as well and giving them time uh, to deal with those kinds of things. And, and I think um, you've also made an important point in terms of, um, you know, just that, that communication is really, really important um, with your 
managers with your employees and checking in on a regular basis, see how people are doing, kind of get the temperature of the room and, and how individuals are doing. Um, so they can really sort of manage their workload along with their family obligations as well. Um, and so, you know, it, it, those kinds of things are going to be really, really important, I think, um, to help reduce a lot of the stress and anxiety um, that's been developed, you know, that's developed over this uh, pandemic period. Absolutely. So. And um, Donna, I absolutely believe that, you know, these conversations are unique for managers. They're, they're um, uncomfortable and they really haven't had to have them before. So how can we all make sure that they have the tools and the conversation tools and, and able to communicate with employees in a way that they hadn't had to in the past? So we'll talk about all of those things in our breakout session. <laughs> So I'm passing it over to Colleen, I believe. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Tanja. Thank you, um, Dawn. That was just incredible. So much real-time information about data. I know that we're all communally experiencing this together and there's so much that you brought to that conversation that can inspire you know, really needed compassion within the workplace. So you guys are gonna have an awesome breakout room